everyone. My name is Reza Sakarati. I'm the principal of Salesville Elementary School. I'm just going to get my little clicker here. Um, in Lincoln, Rhode Island, and I just want to start out that I'm here representing lots of people, and I want to acknowledge some of those people. First of all, the teachers and administrators of the Lincoln Public Schools. They're an immense support. They've done tremendous work, and I'm so proud. I wish I could have them all here today. I'd also like to thank the Highlander Institute. This is an organization that we've partnered up with who supports us with learning about blended and personalized learning. And in particular, I'd like to thank Mike Maielli. He's our uh, coach, and also Sean Rubin and Kathy Sanford. They both have written a great book. It's called Pathways to Personalization. And Mr. Rubin's here, and he's going to be doing a session a little bit later today. So if you're uh, interested in learning more about this, um, I encourage you to go to that session. So Salesville Elementary School is outside of Providence, Rhode Island. It's in Lincoln. We border some um, urban districts, and we have a part of our district, that, our, our community, that is rather affluent. So it's a really interesting community. It's one that I think is fascinating because in the region, in the Northeast, you find sometimes you get priced out of a community. Lincoln is somewhere that you could have upward or downward mobility. You could stay there for the rest of your life if you'd like. Salesville in particular, a lot of people leave and then they come back to have their children learn at Salesville. I'm so fortunate because I get to work at a small school where I get to know the students very well and their families. And so our story is about scaling up. So like many public schools, we have had a lot of trouble sometimes getting an issue going. For example, data teams. We did data teams. We had people come out from outside. We took half a day. We got substitutes. We were crunching numbers. We were seeing great things. And when the money dried up, those practices kind of went away and we went back to doing more streamlined approaches. We still use the data, but we don't do those protocols the way that they taught us, even though they were really helpful. Same thing with a lot of other initiatives. They seem to just pitter out. Or sometimes we see something really promising and then all of a sudden, it just dead ends in, in like one or two classrooms. But blended learning, somehow, some way in our school, it was able to spread. And that's what I'm so excited to talk about. So you're probably familiar with Roger's innovation curve. And if you're not, it's a, you're gonna hear it in action because I'm gonna have some of my teachers share about that. But what we found was that by using this model and, and recognizing it, we were able to figure out what levers are necessary to be able to spread an idea. And our idea begins with a model classroom, but then spreading it again and again. And it's helped us to figure out ways to spread new writing approaches and other initiatives. So what I'm going to show you right here is like, I think better than I can say it, some of my teachers and how this initiative spread. So if you could play the video, please. This is Sailville Elementary School, home of the stars. This is a story of our journey, how a great idea spread among teachers and was supported by building and district administrators. I'm one of the original early adopters at my school and I've been teaching for 36 years. I began to use blended learning so students would gain exposure to technology and skills at an early age. Through blended learning, le lessons are differentiated to better meet the needs of all learners in my classroom. Every student has access to a classroom experience that is personalized to provide challenges, build upon their strengths, close gaps, and eliminate academic weaknesses. As an early adopter, I received professional development, did a lot of learning on my own, and became more comfortable through much trial and error. I began blended learning two years ago when the technology coach approached me with a new initiative from the district. As a novice, I'm always looking for new ways to incorporate technology and keep my students engaged. My principal approached me and asked if I was interested in working with Highlander and piloting blended learning in my ELA classes. Being new to fourth grade after teaching seventh grade math, I realized this would give me a chance to become more familiar with the curriculum and allow me to better differentiate using computers in small groups. I understood starting this mid-year would be a challenge, but I was comforted knowing I would have support from my colleagues, principal, and the Highlander coaches. I remember last year learning about blended learning at a faculty meeting. I went there and I looked, went through all of the stations I enjoyed it, and I thought, this makes a lot of sense. I can do this in my classroom. 
Blended learning allows me to meet with students in a smaller group, and I feel I am better able to get to know my students this way. I use stations as a way to meet the needs of my students, whether to challenge them or to reteach. The students are highly motivated by stations and are becoming more independent as the year goes on. I want to try blended learning to better meet the academic and social needs of all my children. I'm doing station rotation in order to progress through skills at the pace that best meets the group of children in front of me, as well as with the appropriate presentation of material and level of support they need. Blended learning has helped me to better address the social needs of children, learning how to work together to better communicate with each other and become more independent thinkers and problem solvers. I remember the buzz going through the building when our first group of colleagues took a leap of faith and began using this new approach in their classrooms. These colleagues opened up their classrooms for visits and spoke openly and honestly about the challenges and benefits of using such a model with their students. After being welcomed in a fourth grade class and speaking with my grade level colleague, we both decided we should join the team. We discussed how it was a twist on a familiar learning center model primary grade teachers like ourselves had experienced in the past. We had a strong support group we could turn to as we began this journey at the building level, our district colleagues, as well as our coach from Highlander. To support our continued growth, we've been networking with other schools in the Highlander network and teachers and administrators within our own district. As a result, we've had visitors from across the country help us grow and learn. So as you can see, there are different needs for each of the teachers and different groups. And I would love to keep the conversation going. So if you are interested, you can meet up with me later. Here's my Twitter account and my email address. Well, thank you very much.